So we're actually going to start today with the preview and predictions for WWE Backlash. As Backlash is set to take place tonight in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And it is the last pay-per-view before the brand split takes shape. Sort of. But we'll break down that in the news video later tonight. But tonight at... Back, I mean, but tonight on Backlash, it is Seth Rollins versus Omos. And, uh, I mean, I think that the easiest way to do it is to say that Seth Rollins is going to 100% win. Because you don't see Seth Rollins losing to Omos, especially considering the fact that Seth is probably at this point one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. To win the World WWE Championship at Night of Champions. And the company would 100% not benefit in any way, shape, or form having Seth lose to Omos. Especially with the randomness of the rivalry. And the lack of clarity for the rivalry. It isn't exactly something that we know why it's happening. It's just something that was just thrown together on television. And is happening so it brings up the question of what's really the point outside of getting Omas and Seth on the show. You know, but all I would say is that Seth belongs with, uh, as, as the saying goes, Seth belongs holding the winner's purse. Is going to win the winner's purse tonight against Omas because it doesn't make sense going any other way. Then we move to a triple threat match for the United States Championship as Theory looks to have this, the, uh, the odds stacked against him again. Against Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed. These, the uh, United States Championship is now on SmackDown with Gunther and Theory switching brands. Um, so it does bring up the question of, is Bronson Reed on SmackDown? Is Lashley on SmackDown? Is Theory on SmackDown? And whichever brand each member, each man is on, that will give you an indication, um, that will give you an indication of who could win. Off the top of my head, I think Theory and Lashley are both on SmackDown and Bronson Reed is on Raw. So... I think that if anything, it would be where Theory or Lashley win. I mean, I think that maybe the best way to go about it is having Lashley get the victory because it gives us a break away for a. a, a it gives us an opportunity to break away from seeing Theory as United States Champion. And maybe you could start building up Theory to give him the opportunity to be more than just the United States Champion. I'm not saying Lashley doesn't deserve it, but if you have no intention of giving Lashley the opportunity to challenge for the, United, the World Heavyweight title, which again we'll get to in a second in, you know, in the upcoming news video, but... If there, if Lashley's not going to be in contention for that, then putting him in content, put giving him the United States title, is a viable consolation prize. The Royal Women's Championship, Bianca Belair and Io Sky, for the Royal Women's title. I mean, I think that if Io Sky. If EO Sky was staying on Raw, if the damage control was staying on Raw, then EO Sky would be a viable winner for the United for this championship. But because she is not staying on Raw and going to SmackDown with the rest of damage control, it doesn't make sense for her to win the title if you're gonna transfer the titles anyway. So Bianca Belair clearly is going to retain the title. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle against the Bloodline. 
I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think that I've said this multiple times over the past couple of months that the Bloodline can't win every match and that they need to do something that gives credibility back to the challengers. I mean, they've done a good job of keeping Sammy and Kevin credible. They've done a good job of keeping, you know, those guys credible over the last couple of months. But the fact of the matter is there is tension in the bloodline. And I think playing into that tension tonight would make that tension a little bit more clear, I guess is the best way to put it. So I think that is the way that they should go with the idea of the Usos coming up short again, leading to questions of, can they get the job done? And then maybe, just maybe, moving away from Sammy and Kevin against the Usos, because for the better part of the last five months, it's been, or actually since November, so maybe like October, November, it's been the Usos versus the Bloodline. I mean, it's been the Usos versus Sammy and Kevin, or Kevin Owens has been against the Bloodline since since about September because of war games. So moving in a different direction at this point would probably not be the worst idea. Especially if... Um, especially if the Jey Uso against Roman Reigns could be something that we see in the future. Rhea Ripley against Zelina Vega with, again, Rhea Ripley. Well, this, this rivalry is a little bit different because Rhea and Zelina are both going to be on SmackDown, but actually, no. I, I actually take that back. Rhea Ripley's going to be on Raw. But Rhea just won the Women's Championship at WrestleMania, so I can't see her dropping it now to Zelina Vega. And even though I completely disagree with the fact that they should be doing this, that being dropping, the, you know, having one side uh, just transferring the belts between Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair, I think that Rhea Ripley's still winning and keeping the belt. The San Juan Street Fight, Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest in the match that could main event. Bad Bunny against Damian Priest, and you could bet your bottom dollar that the LWO and that the LWO and Judgment Day will get involved. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I, I mean, honestly, I don't really have expectations. Because I don't know how you can have expectations for Bad Bunny with this being his first match as a singles wrestler. He has never competed in a singles match before. And with the question being it could be the main event, it leads to the question of can Bad Bunny handle the pressure and can Damian Priest handle the pressure? This, this is both their first opportunities to be in such a high-ranking position, especially with Bad Bunny being in his hometown. Or home country. I think it brings up the question. It brings up a lot of questions, and it could help bring that rivalry forward. But also bring up the question of if WWE is to do war games at Survivor Series this year, would the LWO versus the Judgment Day be something that they could do? Um, it would be the question of can they keep it interesting until then to allow a few, you know, to allow the feud to possibly get to that point, especially with a lot of people thinking that Ray and Dominic will have a rematch next year at WrestleMania, which I completely disagree with because they don't need to have a rematch next year at WrestleMania because Ray could get retired by somebody other than his son. I do think Bad Bunny gets the victory in this match. Cody versus Brock, there's nothing to it. It's an interesting rivalry. It's an interesting feud. I think that they should have had somebody stand up for Cody this month against Brock Lesnar, have Cody return at 
Backlash, setting up the rival, setting up the match for Night of Champions instead of doing it at Backlash, but that's just me. With that being said, Cody gets the victory, gets his win back, and moves into it into the World Heavyweight Title Tournament as a potential challenger. I mean, a potential champion for the new world title. With that being said, though, that is it for the preview of Backlash, and that is my thoughts on what will happen tonight at the Premium Live event down in Puerto Rico. Let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts and what you think is going to happen, and I will see you in the next one.